Carl, thank you so much for doing this for us. Much appreciated. I'll try and make the questions not too long because I know you've done a lot of talking already this morning. Right. Now, you are one of the world's leading neuroscientists. It's very exciting to have you here today. Um, you're also one of the world's most cited sci scientists more generally, and you've collaborated with lots of experts from lots of other dif disciplines, which, again, is what we're trying to do here today. And now, one of your, your uh, frequent collaborators, Andy Clark, uh, suggested early on that, uh, I'm going to quote him here, uh, the frontiers of economics may turn out to border rather closely on those of cognitive science. There is clearly much to learn. Perhaps we should learn it together. Now, the question then is, does this symposium capture that? I think it does, yes. I think there's an eclectic mix of people here, very carefully chosen, obviously. 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 <laughs> um, but speak to all the right different perspectives, you know, to understand sentient behaviour at different levels. I think that's the key thing. Yeah. Um, so one wants experts in understanding the behaviour of a single brain cell through to an organised brain, to a person, to, um, to the markets. Mm. Uh, and I think we have that... So we've, we're only halfway through the, the first day. Is there anything that's come up today that you found particularly interesting that perhaps you wouldn't have thought of that has allowed you to make a new connection? Um, yes, the, 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 there are several questions I didn't have answers to, which is, which is unusual. <laughs> well, that's it's a, it sounds a bit arrogant, but the, the, that's always very exciting. Um, so, you know, what is currency? Uh, and, you know, um, is it information? You know, what is the, the metric that shapes dynamics of, of economics and finance? And so it's, it is, in my world, um, a really important question to identify what things we exchange. You know, for example, language mm. or communication, solving the basic problems of hermeneutics, me understanding what you mean. And if the market is uh, committed to transactions in various kinds of currency, what is that representing? What sort of uh, belief updating is that facilitating? So that, that was a, a question which I have no answer to. If I, if I listen carefully, I might find might an answer. Might get it this afternoon. Might get it this afternoon. And are you, are you generally buying this idea that the market can have a mind? Yes, I, I, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I would subscribe to, uh, as I know Patrick does, um, Andy Clark's notion of certain perspectives on the four E's. And in mm. this particular instance, the, uh, the extended aspect um, and the embedded aspect. So in the old days, this would be situated cognition. Um, I've heard another lovely phrase um, this week, which is distributed cognition. So yes, you know, if you think that mindful processes are processes of belief updating, and that they transcend particular levels, then the market is uh, you know, a well-defined, nice example of that kind of mindful sentient behavior at mm. a particular scale. Okay, interesting. Now, everything we're talking about here today, much of it is, is aimed, or the EBS research programme is aimed anyway, at younger scholars, at younger cognitive uh, economic scholars. Um, so do you think that this is something that is going to be very useful to this group, this new cohort coming up, as ideas we're discussing here? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I, I'm tempted to be flippant here. If it go on, be flippant. <laughs> yeah, we, don't have, we don't have much flippancy at this symposium, right. so go flippant. I think, I think yes, um, and it, you know, it's the younger generation that are going to, I think, um, induce the paradigm shifts. And the, the paradigm shift on offer here on the table is basically a merging of different communities. The flippant part is that they've got to learn some maths. I, I think, mm. you know, if you want to take this back to basic principles and start to simulate and explain in formal terms, then I'm hoping that some of the philosophers and the the practitioners in finance and economics and uh, you know, government advisors um, will commit to hiring young people who are skilled in maths and the physics of self-organisation and sentience. And won't that take us down the wrong road where we end up with too many models, too many numbers and not a lot of consideration about the way minds work? I don't in think a so. Way. No, because if you read mindful behaviour, sentient behaviour as quintessentially a process of modelling in and of itself. I think that the modelling meme is exactly the right direction. In fact, any other direction is the, is the wrong direction. So as you're, as we're conversing now, you're modelling what I mean, I'm modelling what you mean. We're both predicting on the basis of our world models, our models of the current narrative. 
And if one subscribes to that as the basis of all transactions, then to understand and to be able to formalize and write down either in mathematical equations or in silico the formal structure of those models, I think that's the right direction of travel. Okay, good. I'm now going to ask you a very long question. Okay. Sorry about this. But here we go. Actually, Ready? Listen carefully. <laughs> you and others have written about predictive processing as a way for humans to deal with states of the world. Among others, you characterise it as the mind continuously testing hypothesis. What struck, what struck us here is that this echoes how George Soros, via his uh, philosophy of receptivity, views what he and other investors do within the market mind. So continually testing, right? Continually testing the benefit or hedge against states of the world. Uh, so without going into to too much detail, uh, do you think this is a coincidence, or to put it more bluntly, using a, using a loaded term there, are we collectively projecting what happens inside our minds into the outside markets? Right, so a long question, short answer. Okay, good. <laughs> that was my yes, answer. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. <laughs> and it's exactly the model we were talking about. Yeah, exactly what we're after here. Yeah, it, it, it's just a scientific process enacted in different contexts. You know, we're all in the game of testing our hypotheses, our models, our explanations for the world, that our world works continuously, uh, securing the evidence for or against our hypotheses, and then updating our beliefs about how that happens, whether it's in our conversation or whether it's in investment or climate change. It's exactly the same principles. Exactly. Brilliant. Thank you so much.